This is the periodic table. The periodic table is broken down into individual groups. Group one, the alkali metals. Group two, the alkaline earth metals. Groups three through 12, the transition metals. Group 17, the halogens. And group 18, the noble gases. These are the named groups and they each have their own properties. You see, elements in the same group have the same basic chemical properties, and elements in different groups have different physical and chemical properties. I'm going to demonstrate that to you using two elements. One, sodium, is in group one. The other, calcium, is in group two. Now, group one is called the alkali metals. Group two is called the alkaline earth metals. The word alkaline means basic, it's the opposite of acidic. So instead of saying you've got an acid and a base, you could say I've got an acid and an alkaline, because alkaline means base. And what that means is that these both, these two groups, when you put these metals into water, you get a base and hydrogen as a byproduct. And I'm going to demonstrate the difference in reactivities between group one metals and group two metals. On the first part, sodium, that's this right here, you might be able to see here how the sodium is actually inside some sort of liquid. This is mineral oil. The reason we have to keep sodium and all group one metals under oil is because if they get exposed to air, they're gonna oxidize very fast and the whole batch would be ruined very quickly. In fact, it could even catch fire and, well, burn through this. And that's not good. Metal fires, really, really bad, because they're very hard to put out. I'm going to put the phenol phthalene into the water to test for the presence of a base, sodium hydroxide. Notice how the phenol phthalene is clear, because phenol phthalene only has a pink color in a pH above 8 and distilled water has a pH of seven. Phenolphthalein is clear below eight. This is sodium. Sodium is so soft, I can actually cut it with a pair of scissors. And the rest goes back into the oil to prevent oxidation. I'm a little scared right now. This is an enormous piece, okay? I'm just letting you know that now. I've never put a piece in quite this big. That's why we have a blast shield here for safety purposes. Don't try this at home. I'm what you call an expert. Here we go. As it produces hydrogen gas, the hydrogen gas catches on fire. That was great! But don't try this at home, please. Calcium isn't actually trapped under a liquid at all. It's a lot less reactive, so as long as you keep the bottle shut tight, it's going to be just fine. So again, group one metals, hugely reactive. Group two metals, reactive, but not as reactive. Now, let's take a look at that reaction in water. Okay, so in order to test this, we need to take, once again, our distilled water, And to prove to you that this alkaline earth metal forms a base, we're going to test for the presence of base with phenol phthalene, which, as you know, turns pink when a base is added to it. Right now, it's colorless. From a pH of 8 and lower, it's colorless, and above 8, turns pink. So let's put some calcium in and see what happens. One piece of calcium. I'm capping this up so that it doesn't oxidize. And now 
I'm going to place this in the water. Bubbles. That's the hydrogen gas being given off. And the pink is the calcium hydroxide that's forming as a result of this reaction. Wasn't that fun? You'll notice that this reaction was nowhere near as violent as the reaction we did with sodium. That's because calcium is less reactive than sodium. And that is the difference between the properties of group one and group two metals.